So the media has widely reported uh, warnings from the UK that people with the history of severe allergies shouldn't get the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, these warnings were reported due to two people experiencing an adverse reaction to the vaccine, but can you help clear up the information that came out of the UK uh, when it comes to allergies and the COVID-19 vaccine? I, I can try. Um, I, I will say this, this is a fluid and evolving situation. And obviously we're, we're not in the UK and we, we, we don't know everything that happened or, or, or what happened. Um, but, but from what is publicly known that these were two patients who were under the care of an allergy specialist for unrelated conditions, um, each who were prescribed self-injectable epinephrine because they had a risk of anaphylaxis. And, and these two individuals had um, uh, reactions yesterday after being vaccinated. And you know the details of, of what happened and, and what their response was is, is, are, are not clear. Um, <clears throat> But I, I think, you know, this is a new vaccine, a new vaccine technology, um, slightly different excipients, which we'll, we'll get to in a bit. Um, I, I think that they have taken the strategy to, you know, without knowing who could be at risk to sort of draw a larger circle around a broad group who could be at risk and sort of work back from there. Um, you know, the the issue isn't as much sort of, I mean, vaccine reactions happen all the time. If you look at, if you look at the Pfizer data and the Moderna data, each, both the placebo and, and the um, uh, active arm had a rate of anaphylaxis. Now, it wasn't very high. And certainly, you know, what, what has me scratching my head is we didn't really hear about any of this in, in, in the trial data, but um, you know, now we're in the general population and this is what happens when you move from a trial to real life and, and sometimes surprise. Um, but um, you know, they both reactions happened at a vaccination center where people are equipped to treat a reaction, which is the most important thing. And nobody's going to be getting, nobody's driving by, you know, some sort of vaccines are us sticking their arm out the window, getting a vaccine and off on their way. These are all going to be um, done at a center where we watch every vaccine that's given in the U.S. is given under observation for some period of time. So, you know, we expect that this could happen and this is, you know, we're prepared for this. So this did happen. They're working backwards to figure it out. And I think, you know, with vaccines in, in short supply anyways, it's just easier to sort of maybe push these people towards the back of the queue, as they would say over there, um, and, and let the people without as much of a potential risk, and we don't even know what it is. And, you know, this is, again, a very broad warning. And, you know, they're saying, you know what, let, let's do these guys first. It might be a little bit easier. We'll work backwards towards you. And more will come out, um, you know, for those watching, remember, this is a vaccine that's not indicated for children yet. Um, you know, and it's really not going to be available for people right now who are not frontline workers who are at the highest priority and highest risk of exposure. Um, so I, I think more will come out in time. Um, but, you know, you, you do vaccines in centers like this for a reason because you could react and these people were treated and that, that's what you can expect. So. Yeah, if I may, I think that this just highlights what we've seen since the beginning of the pandemic and the way that information is being spread. Um, uh, <laughs> we, we are caught in this constant news cycle and everybody's on red alert and uh, in, in an effort to get the, the, the headlines out there, sometimes we rush to judgment. So I would just say to everybody, um, you know, it's okay to take a deep breath. <laughs> we need context. We need perspective. We need to verify sources. We need to understand we are missing crucial details uh, that can help guide anything from this point forward. Uh, we have time to sort this out. Uh, we will sort this out and we'll be able to hone things in a little bit more. And oh, by the way, this is just one of many candidate vaccines. So if this one doesn't pan out for whatever reason, we have more coming down the pike. And the only thing I would add to that is there are different technologies. So if this does turn to be turn out to be something related to mRNA, well, we have adenovirus, we have protein. There are other ways of making vaccines. They're coming. They're just not the first ones that are out there. So, and and the other thing I would, I would also like triple down on with what Dave said is, unfortunately, twenty four hour news cycles are not helpful here. Um, there's just too much information coming out that is really preliminary. And I really would just stress to people, just take a deep breath and relax. You're not, you know, we're not going to see the vaccine getting out to, to the general public for a while. This will be worked through and we will know who's really more at risk than not. And none of this is unexpected for a, for a vaccine that's a new, new technology and a new vaccine being rolled out. So I, I think it's, 
the media likes it a lot more, but it really is, this is how medicine is with, with the new vaccine.